Hello and welcome to the Robin Sealer channel. Today we are going to be working on this tutorial, a painting of water based on a film photo that was from my a family collection of photos. So for this, you can find all the resources photo-wise on my Twitter, at Robin Sealark, and uh, if you want to follow along, jump in, grab your cheap acrylics, and uh, let's make a painting. <laughs> Welcome to today's tutorial. I'm going to be working on this medium density fiberboard, something I bought from a local hardware store, and we are going to be using this little section of the painting. The reference photo, again, can be found on my Twitter, at Robin Sealark. In preparing this fiberboard, I'm just going to sand on the edges from any cuts made with a saw so I can get it prepped for our process. And then I'm going to move on to the next preparation step, which is picking our base color to prime this board with. I decided to go with a mid-tone selection for this. So if you take a look where my finger is pointing in this frame, you'll see kind of a medium royal blue, and that is where I'm going to begin. These are the colors that I added to my palette. You'll see there's a number of different brands. Some are more expensive and some are more cheap. I honestly just use what I have around and I think that you can get a lot out of your own supplies so don't feel like you have to stick with my exact color palette. All of it is basically just red, yellow, blue, white, and black. Those are essentially the colors that you're going to need because with our primaries and a white and black we can mix the majority of all colors. I'm going to do a transfer drawing onto this. If you would like to use my exact tracing, I have that available on my Twitter as well. I outlined for this the highlighted areas as well as the shadowed areas. And the way this works is we're just going to flip this drawing down now trace over our lines to transfer my new pastel. You could use charcoal. And then after it is all done and checked, I can peel away the tape and get started. Be careful if you decide to brush off your surface. I was working lightly with a very dry, clean brush and I knew that I had good contrast to the way I had done my drawing and that it was going to stay visible for me. So just practice, be careful, and then use some kind of a fixative when you're done to attach your drawing. Here we're gonna go in first with our most highlighted color. I chose these options, uh, this ivory, because it had a little bit of yellow in it, and then I just needed to add the slightest amount of blue in there. You can tell from looking at choices I'm making here, things you might want to do a little bit different. My highlight is actually quite bright, and I think I could have toned down or muted that, but through the process I do put on a number of layers of paint, so you'll be able to see how those colors emerge and develop through the process. This part is fairly straightforward though you do have to pay attention and make sure you're working into the correct areas as you do your painting. Like I said my drawing I outlined those highlights and the deepest shadows so the majority of my outlining is going to be filled in with this very light ivory and blue color and then just in a few select areas will we go in with those deepest shadow tones. So you don't have to think too critically throughout this period. Work at it like it's a drawing book and filling in the right areas. We're basically trying to get coverage and block in our major color spots so that it becomes easier for you when we go in and do those varying circles of different colors to create shine and a different effect. It'll be easier for you throughout the process, but this is essentially blocking in. So after I've put in my darkest shadow, a color that I mixed up and didn't just strictly use black with, I'm able to use some of my antique white and mix it together with that black blue red combo in order to do a slightly lighter well definitely lighter transitionatory color this is outlining the 
deepest shadowed areas. Make sure you're looking at your reference photo. And after that, we're going to go in with other transitionatory colors. On the very outside, it was a bit more of a light blue than that inner gray circle was. So I used that light blue to trace the inside of our highlights. And by doing that, we're starting to create our adjusted tones moving from highlights to deeper shaded areas. In the middle of our highlight there is this kind of deep red color. I just used red and black and a very thin brush to streak through those areas and create the very middle for the basis of how we're going to develop that gradiated color going into the shines on our water the uh, our water bubbles, our, our water crests. <laughs> I picked up yellow ochre thinking that this would give me a warm enough shade when I mixed it with the red, but I actually end up adding a cadmium yellow to my palette in order to get a brighter orange because this is going to be kind of the transitionatory tone that we develop on top of those deeper red shades to bring in warmth to our composition as well as to make a color that fades more nicely into that super bright highlight that we put down very first. So with this, I first put on kind of a thinned out, watered down yellow to give us brighter tones. And then I made a more opaque yellow. And as you see right here, what I'm doing is cleaning up our general image. As I said earlier, we were mostly blocking in. We wanted to develop the structure of our image so that you would have every thing in front of you that you needed to then finesse the details and work in a calculated way to clean up your image. So this is the first round of cleaning up our image. You can see I do dilute my acrylic paints. Sometimes I use them in a way almost a little akin to watercolors, but depending on how much water you add to your acrylics, it will be more or less transparent. So less water, of course, it's going to be more opaque, meaning less see-through, more pigment. But with acrylics, the way you blend them, the way I blend them, is by getting some small amount of liquid mixed in with those colors so that while I'm swirling around the outside of any of my color transitions, I'm able to create this loose layer which shows color from the last layer behind it and in that way it kind of creates these blended shades. I'm moving up my transition, finessing things, and thinking about both my shadowed areas as well as my highlights, what I need to go back into in those areas, whether it is to punch up vibrancy, clean up edges, deepen shadows, boost contrast, what have you. Pay attention to your brush choice and use. You want to make sure that you're being intentional. I used very flat tops to my brushes in varying sizes and this allowed me to work in very thin streaking movements and to have the control that I needed. On our palette, this is the widest range of colors that I used, and it's because we are on our final pass now. I basically have everything blocked in the way that I want to. It's relatively clean, but here's where I'm going in to do all of the last detailing, coloring, surface work to make sure it looks just how I want it to. Oftentimes in my personal practice, after I would do this, part or maybe sometime before I would go in and probably finish this with oil paints because I like the way that adds additional ability to blend and work to slowly craft out my tones and color transitions but you really can accomplish a lot just with acrylics so I stuck two acrylics in this and you can see me going in now and just really punching up everything that I need to. I added a bit of a brighter blue to the exterior of my navy blue section which punched up the reflective colors and made it a bit more exciting palette wise and then also I made sure to 
dial up the orange tones in a very watered down, almost glaze-like paint application so that I had more warmth coming in around those central dark red lines that I applied in an earlier stage. Make sure that you deepen your darks to where they want to be and punch up your highlights to where they want to be. If there's any fine line work you need to do to really just finesse the top parts of where the water is catching light, those will do really positive things for your image. But have a little bit of fun. You can really change up the coloration of this if you wanted to. You could even bring this image into Photoshop and do an entire inverted or recolored version of this. It's fun because it is a beautiful water image, but it also has a very artistic, uh, almost psychedelic flair to the way it's designed. So I hope that you can have some fun with this and uh, enjoy painting. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support this channel in any way, you can check out my social media pages at Robin Sealark, or you can purchase this painting as well as other paintings of mine at robinsealark.com. I'm also on Patreon for a monthly, you know, support, and you can do challenges with us. So hopefully, I'll see you somewhere on the internet. If not, I will see you in my next video. Uh, have a nice week.